guys! So today we're going to be reading pages 95 through 132. And yes, that's a lot. So there will be quite a few videos, but please remember that these are only going to be in four to five minute chunks. So watch a few, take a break, watch a few more. Um, I'm just trying to get all of this in before the end of school. And since we only do three days a week, I have to squeeze more pages in. So don't worry, you can take a break. Um, they're only four minute, five minute sections, so you can do it. But let's get back to wonder. Now remember, we're on Via's perspective. After school, I hear we're driving you home today. It was Miranda in eighth period. She just sat down at the desk right behind me. I had forgotten that mom had called Miranda's mother the night before to ask if she could drive me home from school. You don't have to, I answered instinctively, casually. My mom can pick me up. I thought she had to pick Augie up or something. It turns out she can pick me up afterward. She just texted me. Not a problem. Oh, okay. Thanks. It was all a lie on my part, but I couldn't see sitting in a car with the new Miranda. After school, I ducked into a restroom to avoid bumping into Miranda's mother outside. Half an hour later, I walked out of the school, ran the three blocks to the bus stop, hopped on the M86 to Central Park West, and took the subway home. Hey there, sweetie, Mom said the moment I stepped through the front door. How was your first day? I was starting to wonder where you guys were. We stopped for pizza. Incredible how easily a lie can slip through your lips. Is Miranda not with you? She seemed surprised that Miranda wasn't right behind me. She went straight home. We have a lot of homework. On your first day? Yes, on our first day, I yelled, which completely surprised Mom. But before she could say anything, I said, School is fine. It's really big, though. The kids seem nice. I wanted to give her enough information so she wouldn't feel the need to ask me more. How was Augie's first day of school? Mom hesitated, her eyebrows still high up on her forehead from when I'd snapped at her a second earlier. Okay, she said slowly, like she was letting out a breath. What do you mean, okay, I said. Was it good or bad? He said it was good. So why do you think it wasn't good? I didn't say it wasn't good. Jeez, Via, what's up with you? Just forget I asked anything at all, I answered and stormed dramatically into Augie's room and slammed the door. He was on his PlayStation and didn't even look up. I hated how zombified his video games made him. So, how was school? I said, scooching Daisy over so I could sit on his bed next to him. Fine, he answered, still not looking up from his game. Augie, I'm talking to you. I pulled the PlayStation out of his hands. Hey, he said angrily. How was school? I said fine, he yelled back, grabbing the PlayStation back from me. Were people nice to you? Yes. No one was mean. He put the PlayStation down and looked up at me as if I had just asked the dumbest question in the world. Why would people be mean, he said. It was the first time in his life that I heard him be sarcastic like that. I didn't think he had it in him. The Padawan Bites the Dust. I'm not sure at what point that night Augie had cut off his Padawan braid or why that made me really mad. I had always found his obsession with everything Star Wars kind of geeky, and that braid in the back of his hair, with its little beads, was just awful. But he had always been so proud of it, of how long it took him to grow it, of how he had chosen the beads himself in a craft store in Soho. He and Christopher, his best friend, used to play with lightsabers and Star Wars stuff whenever they got together, and they had both started growing their braids at the same time. When August cut his braid off that night without an explanation, without telling me beforehand, which was surprising, or even calling Christopher, I was just so upset, I can't even explain why. I've seen Augie brushing his hair in the bathroom mirror. He meticulously tries to get every hair in place. He tilts his head to look at himself from different angles, like there's some magic perspective inside the mirror that could change the dimensions of his face. Mom knocked on my door after dinner. She looked drained, and I realized that between me and Augie, today had been a tough day for her, too. So you want to tell me what's up? She asked nicely, softly. Not now, okay, I answered. I was reading. I was tired. Maybe later I'd be up to telling her about Miranda, but not now. I'll check in before you go to bed, she said, and then she came over and kissed me on the top of my head. <laughs>